Today, we're going to check out Topaz Bloom, which is a powerful web-based AI upscaler that you can use to really level up your AI art and bring the detail up whilst increasing the resolution. It's a really simple platform to use. You simply log in, drag and drop your image in, and you get a few options. We have varying levels of creativity from subtle all the way up to max that will change the detail of your image. But also you want to add in a prompt to describe your image before upscaling. Now I want to quickly mention that this image was created with Midjourney and it was actually upscaled to 2048 by 2048. So when I come back to Topaz Bloom, so if I bring this up to a 4x upscale, it's actually more than my plan allows because I'm using the free trial here for this particular image. And I want to also go from low creativity and I'm going to bring that all the way up to max creativity. And to make sure I get a really good style of image, I'm going to add at the end sci-fi movie screen cap. So it looks nice and photorealistic and dramatic. Now I can do up to four outputs, but because I'm still just trying this out on the free tier, I'm going to head over and process one image to see the results. Now while that's processing on the right sidebar over here, I'm actually going to go through and submit the same upscale on the other end of the spectrum with low creativity, so we can compare the two ends of the spectrum. And you notice it forms a nice little cue on the right. And now the results are in. So I'm going to focus on this section over here so that we can actually take a look at the difference. So this is the image with low creativity and I'm simply using the preview pane inside Bloom itself. So you can check this out quite easily as you're upscaling and you can see the amount of details added to the car. You look down here at the wheels and the light, you can see how it's really added the detail. The left is quite fuzzy and by comparison and almost looks dull once you've seen the upscale. So I think there's a pretty good job on the low creativity. Even with a massive improvement on the dog itself, it actually looks like a dog. But let's head to the max creativity to go from one end of the spectrum to the other and check out the difference. The amount of detail and clarity in the image really goes up. So you can see how it's re-rendered so much of the detail, added in so many different elements to the car. And the lights here look fantastic. The way it's actually added in the individual sort of like bars of light. This is a really awesome tool if you're looking to create highly detailed AI art because you can use a, a base like this mid-journey image and really add a ton of detail. And we've gone from 2048 by 2048 to 4096 by 4096, but the resolution isn't even the most impressive thing. It's just the amount of detail you're able to get. Now, another example is this image here, which I use the subtle upscaler on Bloom, which is the absolute lowest setting. And the result sharpened it up and did a pretty good job of getting what we needed out of the image. But moving up to high definitely took it too far in the wrong direction. So you still need to find the right level of creativity. But taking a closer look, the subtle upscale did a great job with the details. So with photos and things like that, it could be probably the preferred option. And also moving across to the woman's face, there's a little less detail here to upscale, but you can see how consistent it is and how sharp the result ends up being. And you can see the result of it on this mid-journey image here, which has a lot of detail and a lot of nature. So these types of upscales are really great for adding detail to nature scenes and for scenery in general. So I move on to the low, and what we get is pretty good. It manages to maintain everything pretty spot on and the leaves, the detail looks great. We move up to medium and it's still pretty decent. Some of the architecture's turned into a tree, but it still keeps the main look. Move on to max and it's just a little bit too much. It's overgrown and it has kind of taken the image a bit too far. But the resolution and the crispness of the plant life and everything in the medium upscale compared to the original is just that perfect balance where we're adding a lot of detail while still maintaining the integrity of the image. But how much can it improve images that don't have a lot of detail or were rendered quite some time ago? This image was made with Leonardo AI many years ago, so it's 768 by 768, meaning it's actually quite small. And also the detail is not that great. So keeping it on high creativity, and this time I should be able to bring it up to about 4x. So trying to get as much as I can out of it. And I'm gonna add a prompt such as a cyberpunk warrior with a lightsaber partially robotic. So now I can bring that 4x up. There's also a creativity boost for larger resolutions if you wanna turn that on. But because I'm using the lower level, I'm just gonna stick with this for now. I'm gonna go this time with two outputs and hit process. What's really cool is you get this sidebar over here and you can see what size the source image is. You can check your upscale and we have version one and two because we got upscaled two images this time. Bring it up to 3000 by 3000 and it lets us know the high creativity and the prompt. But I can click on this one image here. Once it loads, I can come and do my comparison. 
So I've zoomed in quite a bit here. So I want to see what, how well it's handled the face. And I didn't prompt for a woman. I didn't prompt for a man. So it's kind of defaulted to a woman here on the first image. And I go to the second image. And again, we get a woman because we didn't really prompt for man or woman. But overall, it's done a pretty good job. And considering we've gone from 768 by 768 to over 3000 by 3000 pixels, that's pretty impressive. And the amount of details added into the texture on the clothing and in the armor, I think looks really, really good. I also threw some of my own artwork at it, not just AI art. This was taken from a toy that I photoshopped up and I always liked the effect, but I added a low creativity to it. And you can see how it adds a ton of detail to the machinery. When we get to the symbol here, it kind of starts to turn it into the wrong symbol. But I mean, there's only so much you can expect. And the face here, the way it's sharpened up the face does look a bit strange that now he has nostrils. But overall, I mean, you could probably work with this and re-render certain areas of it. But this is one example where I think the upscaler probably didn't work well. And if I move up to medium, we get a vastly different look this time. Some of the detail looks great when you zoom in, but it's just, it's moved and changed things a little too much. And high creativity actually did, I think about the best, this face looks pretty crazy. I'll put it side by side and you can see it's really humanized the face, but it's really sharpened up a lot of the shadows and bits and pieces. I love the uh, elements that's added to the helmet, some of the gears and pieces it's added over here. So it is still really great, but it doesn't necessarily solve every problem. It may be hard to get this exact face to upscale the way you want it to, but at least you know you have some options to work with. But this is a pretty difficult image and a lot of AI generators don't really understand Megatron quite well. So I also tried throwing Optimus at it. So this is my original Optimus image and with low creativity, it's actually nailed most of it. You can see there's a few little differences. There's a weird, funny little uh, thing down here, but overall it's sharpened it up just the right amount. Again, I zoom in on the face. The eyes are a little rounder. Things are slightly different, but the crispness of all the edges and the machinery looks pretty good. So what happens when I go from low to medium? Things look a little extra detailed, probably a little more detailed than they should, but very cool the way it's added detail in here, but it's overcooked some of these other areas, added some weird robots down the bottom right here. But overall, some of the areas of detail are pretty impressive. Again, I actually really like what it's done with the face. It really has sci-fi it up, and this is just a toy now turned into this using AI. But we go to high, again, we look at the face, and that's pretty a pretty crazy level up. You look at the whole image. What I find funny is the logo itself has changed. The detail on the thunder looks fantastic and it's completely changed and added like a heap of corrosion to this image. Now, I also asked for robotic elements when I uh, prompted for this, but I did prompt for the character name and transformer. So the level of detail adds is really impressive, especially to the gun here. Uh, it really has done a great job with Optimus on this particular image. Now check out the max creativity where it goes completely off the charts. Again, we have our original and the max. It's added so much detail. It's just completely overcooked this image, added a character down the bottom here. It looks cool. It's cool to look at, but it doesn't really stay true to the original. Again, I like to zoom in on the face. So that is a pretty big deviation. Now, if you're looking, uh, wondering how to use this window here, over here, if I just go to peak view, it'll just show me, if I click, it'll show me on and off what I get. If I come down here to split view, that's when we get the slider. And again, we have side by side view where we can change, move some elements around and view them side by side. And of course you can zoom in and out here. So that's pretty cool. You can also just hit reset and view the whole image side by side as well. And then when you're ready to download, just come down, hit this little download icon, or you can share it or even use as a new source. So take this image and re-upscale it. But is it any different than Topaz Gigapixel's redefined models? Well, I have Topaz on the right, Bloom on the left, both with low creativity. And you can see there's a similar amount of detail, a little bit more detail on the Bloom on the left. But when I move to the dog, there's actually more detail on Topaz Gigapixel. So on average, I think it's about the same. Move on to high, and we've got the maximum creativity for Bloom and left with high on the right. And it's actually a little bit more detailed with the high on Topaz Gigapixel. And this isn't even the max. I just come down to the dog and you can see how much more detail is in the dog. But I switch it up to maximum on Topaz Gigapixel and it's got even more detail, even the car in the background. So I do think you can get more detail from Topaz Gigapixel, but I feel like Bloom has a more natural looking upscale the, compared to the ones from Topaz. But and as you can see, there's a lot more mistakes on the Topaz Gigapixel on the right. 
but if we switch that creativity back down to the high level and it seems to smooth those out. So I think they're both pretty even, except the difference with Topaz Gigapixel is you pay a bigger fee up front to get access to the program for life and updates stop after a year. However, Bloom is more of a monthly payment plan. So it really depends on what your preference is here and which way you wanna go. But also using Redefine on Topaz Gigapixel chews up a lot of computing power. So you have to wait a while in order to get your upscale, whereas Bloom is all done on the server. So you can basically minimize this, work on something else and come back to your upscales without having any effect on your computer's performance. So you can start to see how this is a great tool for AIR as it does change certain things in the image when you really crank up the creativity. Using low creativity on things like photos where things need to be pretty much spot on is also an option. But if you upscale an image and there's something changed you don't wanna change, the cool thing is I can come over here to the right where it has my upscale and my source. If I click on the prompt, it will copy the prompt to the clipboard. I can see this is high creativity. I can go back to the source and start again. Now it's kept the same prompt from my previous uh, upscale, not the one from this image. So this one was just simply called Cyberpunk. So I get rid of that, keeping it on high creativity, moving up to a 2X. I'm gonna add in a different prompt to try and get what I want. So I'll say, now you see here, it's a man with glasses and headphones on. So I have here a Cyberpunk man wearing glasses and headphones sits in a futuristic cyberpunk factory surrounded by computers and robots. So I can actually try to improve the results I got doing a 2X upscale because this was already a decent resolution. Also going for two outputs so I can pick the best one. I hit process and it will appear over here on the right. We wait for it to go through. And now we have our two images top and bottom and we can take a little bit of a look and see which one we think looks the best, at least from a distance. This one's got a lot of artifacts in it I don't really want in the background. The man himself looks pretty similar. So if I click on this one, I can do my comparison and see this looks pretty good. Even if I zoom in, it's done a pretty decent job. Now, if I think it's added too much detail or deviated too much yet again, I can still click on my prompt, go back to the source, and just simply go from high creativity down to medium creativity and submit again. So now we have medium creativity with these two. This bottom one tends to look the best, although this one has a really cool little sort of face on the screen here, but I could download both and Photoshop them together if I wanted to, but I'm gonna click on this one. And I think this has a more natural upscale. The background isn't too overdone. And of course we zoom in on the guy's face and I think that looks pretty good. So that is another thing you can easily back and forth with this platform to fine tune the results you want pretty effectively. And we can also use those same revisions for our warrior with the lightsaber. Again, to prompt for a man instead of a woman if that's not what we're after. Now, of course, I kept trying more, but there's only so much I can show you in this video, but you can see by using the generative models to enhance and regenerate the details, this is an awesome, awesome tool for AI artists. Might not be as handy for photos, but if you're generating AI art on mid-journey, stable diffusion, or anything else, this could definitely be a platform worth checking out. Now, if you're wondering what the pricing is like, you can just sign up for free. You'll get 10 images a month, non-commercial use, and render one image at a time with a 16 megapixel sort of limit. So about a four to 5,000 pixel wide by four to 5,000 pixel tall uh, image size. Now I've subscribed for Light for now because I can use unlimited images same thing, 16 pixel size limit, run it one image at a time, non-commercial use. I am not using this for commercial use at the moment, only to demonstrate how the tool works. But if you wanna use commercial use, you can move up to plus with limited commercial use, but you can render two images at a time. And that's when you start to get the higher resolution images, even up to 100 megapixel images if you go for pro, which is absolutely huge. And you can render four images at a time and all of them you get faster rendering. So this is a really, really cool uh, thing you can try. There is a six day trial for the really big ones if you wanna try that out. Now you do need to obviously add in payment details, so make sure that you actually want to go ahead with that if you uh, stick with it. So you get a pretty good idea of what's available to you. And like I said, with Topaz Gigapixel, you're paying $99 and you get it for the year and it all runs on your computer. So you have unlimited images, higher resolution, but it can suck your computer power a fair bit. Whereas this relies all on the cloud, so you don't have to worry about it using up your computer's resources. But you do pay per month if you want more than 10 images a month. So that is just something to consider when you're, if you're thinking about trying out Bloom. Now, when you're in Bloom, you can also head up to the top corner here and there's home, there's all these other tools. If I go to all tools here, 
you notice with things like Unblur, Denoise, and some of the other tools you would find on, say, Topaz Photo AI, there's also Starlight for upscaling videos along with another video upscaler. So this could be a great tool if you have mid-journey videos or something you want to try out. So I will do a video on that at some point soon also. But otherwise, that just goes to show you the power of the of Topaz Bloom, another really awesome upscaling tool. So this is for the people who prefer to have something online on the web that they can use instead of installing a program. I highly recommend you check it out. There's a link in the description. So try out that free tier. Again, 10 images a month. Don't need to put any payment details down. It's just free. You can just sign up, start using it. And that's the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching and have a great day.